Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Deanna Mata. On this week's episode, we got a special treat for you. You know we just handed out some gold balls, so we had to talk to some of the individuals that won those gold balls. Yeah, that's right. The head coach from the Edmund North Husky girls team is here with us today, and he brought somebody with him, one of his star players and daughter, Elle Paparanas. How's it going, Elle? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Coach, how's it going? Good. Very well, Dion. Thank you. All right, all right. So you know how we do it here on Ford High School Weekly. It's not just about the sports. We get to know the players and the coaches outside of their game as well. So you mind if I ask you guys some personal questions real quick? Sure. All right, well, this is how we're going to do it, okay? I'm going to ask one question. L, ladies first, always and foremost. So you answer first. Coach, you're right behind her, all right? Sounds good. All right. So we're big eaters here at Ford High School Weekly. We love the food, but we're always intrigued on what players like to eat or coaches like to eat before the game. So what's your favorite meal before a game, L? I have two. So either I go to the day, which is two minutes down uh, from my school, and I get an avocado sunrise, or my mom cooks pasta before games, and I like to cook or I like to eat whatever she cooks for me. So, yeah, either cooking or bagel cafe. <laughs> the sunrise, huh? Yes, avocado sunrise. <laughs> Sounds like an NIL deal waiting for your future with that, with, that, with that one over there. All right, coach, you're up next. What uh, what do, what do you like to eat before games? I'm pretty boring. I just like uh, from my playing days. I like a bowl of pasta, get my carbs, and then some type of a red meat for my protein. Pretty pretty basic, but uh, it always did me right. <laughs> okay, so everybody's eating pasta in this household. I see I see how it's going down. I see how it's going down. <laughs> all right, next question. All right, I don't know if you guys are you in the cars or anything, but everybody has their dream car. L, what's your dream car? Oh, my car is an all black Corvette with red interior leather seats. Dad, you hear about that? It's all all red leather interior. If you're, if in case you're, you know, thinking of any, you know, graduation gifts or anything like that. You know? <laughs> well, she's gonna have to fight me for because as a kid, I always loved Corvettes. So uh, if we ever we ever be able to get one, uh, I would have it first, and she would get it when I'm not using it. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. So what? So that's your dream car as well, Coach. I always loved Corvettes as a kid growing up, so that hasn't changed much. All right, Paparonis, Trek Pasta, Trek Corvettes. All right, we're we're going down the line here. All right, favorite vacation spot. Okay, favorite vacation spot. You are you on the mountains? You know, in the in the slopes, or is it more of a tropical beach kind of type of vibe? L, you first. I'm in Greece. Greece is the best vacation ever. They have the most perfect beaches, perfect weather, perfect people, perfect food. Just everything. Greece is top tier. So. But that definitely has to be the vacation spot. All right. Let's see if we vary here a little bit. Coach, where, where, where's your vacation spot? She stole my answer. I lived in Greece for 11 years. I love nothing better than the Greek islands, sitting at the beach in the Greek islands. Nothing better. Are we going to differ at all here, guys? You, you guys are just in sync. Now I know why y'all won so many state championships. Goodness gracious. <laughs> like me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, let's see what we got here. All right. Favorite number. Favorite number. I know we all have, you know, we rock a jersey, we rock a basketball, but sometimes it, it, it can vary. It's not always the same number for your basketball and your favorite number just in personal life. So what's your favorite number, Elle? Definitely number four. Um, it's been my basketball player ever since I can remember. And the reason why I do like four is because I was born in 2004. And when we were little, my older sister, Tony, she took my dad's number. So I wanted to do something for my mom and she played with number four. So I chose number four to like kind of honor her in a way. Um, but yeah, number four is the best number out there. Okay. I'm not mad at it. Shout out to mom. Coach, she, she already told you, you didn't wear a number four. So I'm like, let's go ahead and give me what's the, what's the favorite number here. We're, we're going to differ. Uh, 11 was my first number when I went overseas to play. 11 was the number I wore. I wore it for several years, so I still partial to number 11. 
All right, number eleven, number four. All right, we are we we, we got that cleared up. Seven di digits away. We're not we're not the same. Okay. <laughs> well, when we come back, we'll figure out what was the same between these two and their championship run. We'll be back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with El Paparonis and her dad and coach, Coach Paparonis. So the season, it all starts, you know, coming off a, a championship run and then being forced and, and pressed into a situation where everybody's looking at you guys. Hey, you got to win another one. You got to win back to back. But you're also missing some very, very key players coming back this year. How did it all start? And what were some of the adversities y'all faced early on? I think just us having the pressure of, you know, being reigning state champs, people looked at us as the best and we were ranked as the best. So any team gave us or gave us their best shot. And we just had to learn how to play through pressure because, you know, everyone is looking for an upset. So I think us as a team, we really did come together during preseason and try to fill those different holes that we lost from the year before, like Tony, our point guard, KK really stepped up to be our point guard. And same thing with Kate Melton and Mallory and everyone else. So I think us really coming together and like trying to figure out how to navigate how we're going to play as a team really helped us throughout the season. Coach, what was the point in the season where you felt like they had started to, to kind of gel together and they were actually, you know, coming together and facing this adversity as a team? Well, we were fortunate enough that we had enough girls coming back from last year's championship run that we, we kind of already had some type of continuity going. Uh, but losing two starters, four seniors and two starters, it was uh, a little bit difficult at first, uh, but, uh, you know, we had, you know, being, being preseason ranked number one, returning state champions, we did have the target on our back. Uh, we did have teams coming at us, but we didn't really try to put pressure on ourselves as far as, hey, we have to be undefeated. We have to be number one. We have to win the state championship. We just pressured ourselves to play to be our best every single day, to be our best in practice, to be our best in the games to uh, play as one unit. And like you, the question you asked, uh, I think even early in the season through summer league really helped us. But even early in our scrimmages, before the season started, I started to see us gel as a unit. We were already a tight unit, but uh, the girls had played together. But we had we did have two new starters in the lineup this year. But because they were the sixth and seventh men last year, they still had some continuity with our starters. So I feel like we were playing good team basketball even in the in the preseason and scrimmage season but as the season uh progressed we i felt we were just getting better and better as as, as all of our competition was also l going off of what your what your dad said i mean what was different for you this year i mean it being your senior year and you know your sister not being on the team this year what, what was the, the the difference for you i would just say the difference was knowing that last year my dad and uh, Lacey um, and I have been best friends since like middle school, played with each other in AAU since like fifth grade. So we've kind of grown up playing with each other. You know, she's committed to NC State and I'm committed to the University of San Francisco. So just knowing that it was my last year to play with her really motivated me and her to get a gold ball for our last year. And, you know, having this year be my last year playing with my dad heartbreaking and I knew the one thing I wanted to gift him was a gold ball because it's a lot better playing your last game with your dad coming off a win rather than a loss so I think the only difference for me was just the mindset of wanting it to be a good last season and to win state. Well, it definitely was a good last season and you definitely got your dad that big gift of a gold ball. <laughs> But when we come back, we'll talk about the road to that gold ball and so much more here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're joined by Edmond North Girls Husky team, the captain, the leader, the point guard, El Paparonis, and her dad, the head coach, Mr. Paparonis. How's it going, guys? Great, Deanna. But we're still good, right? Nobody, nobody's tired yet, hun. That you're, you're used to this kind of training, gashers and everything, right? Under pressure all the time. 
<laughs> like it. I like it. All right. So talk about this road to the, an, another gold ball. Everybody was talking about back to back, but when you actually got into the tournament and, and, you know, you're, you're playing it in, in the, the big games, what was it like compared to last year? Uh, compared to last year, I think it was personally harder. Um, looking at our road to even get in the championship game, uh, I believe we did have the toughest road. Uh, we had to play a really, really good Bixby team and then play a really good PC West team. And then obviously Norman last round. Um, so it was much harder. The games were super close. And if I'm correct, we were down for a couple of games that we had to come back from. So it was just a tougher year for state this year, but it made us winning the gold ball 10 times better because, you know, we did have a tough uh, way to state compared to last year. So it just made it more special. Coach, what were some of the challenges uh, coaching in those close games? Well, you know, not just the close games. It was, uh, we're, we're playing the co conference, which is a brutal conference. Uh, four of our teams, uh, four of the eight teams in the state tournament were from our conference. And three of them were in the, uh, <clears throat> the semifinals, three of the four. So we had a, a battle tested schedule. We were in three great tournaments. We went to the uh, Bixby tournament where we faced Bixby, who was the state runners up last year. We went to the Mustang tournament. Uh, and then we went to the Putnam City West tournament and, uh, and had to face uh, a good class and team. And of course, Putnam City West in the finals. So going to the state tournament, when we got there, uh, when I saw the bracket, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't super excited because I, I thought we had a really tough road. Uh, the only good thing that we felt confident about was of the other seven teams that were in the state tournament, we had played six of them and beat them all. Uh, so there was only one team that we had not faced and seen in that tournament. So we knew that we could compete and play with anybody in the tournament, but we know the state tournament. The biggest challenge is you got to come out three nights in a row. And this is the biggest challenge of any state tournament. you got to come out three nights in a row. You can't get in foul trouble. You're praying for no injuries. Uh, and you got to be able to shoot the ball good and play well for three nights in a row. One bad night or one bad shooting night, you go home. So that's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, in the state tournaments. I don't think they change. I think that's year to year. All right. So it's all said and done. You win that final buzzer, you know, goes off and you're champions. Give me the one specific word that describes how you felt when it was all said and done. L, you first. I would say um, last year, they, I wasn't a senior, so I didn't really have much to lose. I still had the hope of winning one the next year. But from the beginning of this year, just winning state, like there was no other option. Like that's what had to be done. So I would say when the buzzer went off and we were crowned champions, it was just relief. Just I felt weight fall off my shoulders and I could just enjoy the moment and just have all the stress leave my body and just be able to hug and, you know, scream and yell and laugh with my teammates knowing that we did what we were supposed to do and we reached our final goal coach final moments tick down and 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 your and your girls are running on the court and there's a dog pile on the floor how did you feel uh you know besides the word relief i'm not gonna use the same word but exhale i was just able to exhale and just let it all out as a team we put a lot of expectations on ourselves as a coaching staff as players we knew that we had the team that could potentially win it. Uh, and so that was our goal. And we worked towards it. We strive towards it. As coaches, we get to do this many years. I've been in a lot of, you know, I've coached now for over 20 years. So I've had 20 chances at this. Uh, I've been there before. I've been to state tournament several times. I've, I've been fortunate enough to win a few of them. Uh, but for these girls, they don't get a lot of chances. So it's a little added pressure for us as coaching staff because we really want it for these girls because they're here for a short time four years most of them don't get to play a whole lot more than two years unless they're you know maybe four year starters but most of them don't start as freshmen and sophomores so they only have a few years to really get to uh, experience this and so as coaches when that horn went off and we were able to to see those girls actually accomplish and celebrate the, the, all the hard work put in it was just a sigh uh, exhale and a sigh of relief that, that we were able to do that as a unit uh, for them 
Well, I'm glad that both of you guys were able to breathe for, for, for that for that second and, and really enjoy that championship. But when we come back, like Coach said, not everybody gets to play when our high school career is done. But El Paparone, <laughs> she certainly does. We'll talk about that and so much more here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the Huskies themselves, the gold ball winning Huskies, El Paparonis and Coach Paparonis. Coach, it's always bittersweet when your players graduate and, and they leave and, and, and leave the nest, so to speak. And it's got to be even rougher when they're your daughters. And you had one graduate and go on to the Naval Academy last year, and now you have another one leaving you as well. Let's talk about this whole, you know, recruiting process as a dad and a coach. What was that like for you? Uh, we really let the girls decide on their own. Uh, I just gave them a certain advice. My biggest advice to them was, is, you know, you want to go where they want you the most. Uh, you know, that's where you're going to be happiest is go where they really, really want you and they really, really are after you. Uh, you know, also a school that's got a, a good education where you, there's a degree that you're interested in getting and things like that. But I think too many kids, they're kind of starry eyed and look for the big power fives and the this and that. And instead of looking at just the schools, no matter what size they are, D1, D2, uh, NAIA, uh, power five or mid major, where they, where you really fit into their style and you fit in with their coach's style and, and that it's going to be a love, love relationship where they love you and you're going to love them. And so that's usually where they, they, they watch the most. And with L, you know, the university of San Francisco, they came in early, they came in hard. They loved her from the get go. They've been watching for two years. They've been after for two years and there was no question. And, and L even committed early uh, because of that. She said, you know, and I said, you sure you don't want to wait and, you know, see what else comes your way. And he goes, why dad, if they're not on me now, if they don't want me now, then, then why would I want to go to them? And she, she knew where she wanted to go. She liked the coaching staff. She liked the program. Uh, they showed a lot of love for her. Uh, and so I think she made a great decision as a dad. Even though she's going far away, my, my biggest thing is that she's happy. And if she's happy there, then, then she made a great decision. All right, L. In, in your own words, what made you happy about the University of San Francisco? Everything. Um, I think the most important thing was the coaching staff um, because Coach Molly, the head coach, she is amazing. Uh, she knows what she's doing. She's played at such high levels and she's been really successful. So, and I love her coaching style. She's really hard and tough, but also like understanding and loving. And Coach Jones, Coach Marrera, just all coaches they're so different in their own way so it's a really good balance and I have a great relationship with each and every one of them and then the team um this is interesting a lot of them are international so the bonds on that team are even closer than what I would consider just an, another team from like mainly like U.S. girls because they're all like they have and I loved that about the team because they really are such a tight unit and I feel like culture is a huge thing for a team to be successful so if you're tight with one another and you're cool with one another and you have the same goals then your culture is going to be good and that's going to lead you to success. Um, also the city of San Francisco is pretty nice. Uh, there's lots of things to do, lots of great food. Uh, I love eating so lots of good food to try but just everything, the facilities, the team, the coaches, um, the city, just everything about it, I love. Four years of, you know, playing with your dad, L, and, and, and having fun and, and playing with your teammates. But when it comes down to this relationship and this bond right here, what was the best moment? The best moment would just be being successful along the side. Because... Um, I don't know. I mean, he really taught me a lot in those four years. And I think the biggest thing I'm going to take away from him is how to be tough. Um, you know, because, you know, some people get baby. Uh, some people aren't blessed to have a coach that's super hard on them. So they don't know how to handle the future or handle not getting babied all the time. 
So I think him being tough on me and him, you know, giving me some adversity was good for me. And I'm going to take that with me to, you know, college, careers, just everything. And because I'll know how to get through it. Um, but yeah, just being successful with him too, just winning and making jokes and being happy and having good family team dinners after games. I'm going to miss so many things I probably shouldn't talk about on here because we'll be on here for like another two hours. So, <laughs> Coach, how about you? What's uh, what's going to be? I know you already, you know, sent one daughter off to college, but I mean, with L specifically, what, what was your favorite moment? Well, the whole four years experience. Uh, like like L said, I'm an old school coach, tough love. Uh, I love all my players. I coach guys for – for 10 years, girls for uh, 12, 11 years now. I love my players to death and do anything for them. They're part of my family, but I'm super tough on them. I have high expectations, high discipline, uh, high accountability. Um, and so the fact that Elle and I, we had a lot of ups and downs. I was tough on her, probably, not probably, but tougher than her than any other player because she was my daughter. She got to hear the blunt of it. You can say certain things to your own kid that you can't say to other kids. Uh, and so I was much tougher on her uh, through four years and to go through that and with the good times and the bad times. And after it's all done, uh, we still have a phenomenal relationship. We love each other a lot. We get along a lot. We talk a lot. We're open. So to uh, be able to have this great of a relationship still after four tough years of coaching your own daughter, uh, that's probably the best part right there. Well, guys, congratulations once again on being back-to-back -back state champions. It was an honor watching you guys play and take on, you know, so much talent in Oklahoma and winning two state championships. Man, un it's, it was remarkable. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dion. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the Ford Game of the Week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Remember, guys, only the best in Oklahoma, like Coach Paparonis and El Paparonis, make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Deanna Mate. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma.